I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my series on vectors. We will further explore the type of vectors and we will understand what are parallel vectors, what are opposite vectors and what are equivalent vectors. Here is a test question for you. You need to draw a parallelogram ABCD with P as a midpoint on AB. That is to say, let's say we have a parallelogram right here. So we know that these sides are parallel, the opposite sides. And in this parallelogram, we have the sides, let's say A vertex as A, B, C, D, right? With P as a midpoint of A, B, so this is the point P, so that P is the midpoint of A, B. Then you have to answer these questions. List all vectors parallel to A, B. So whenever I write in bold, it is a vector. List all vectors equivalent to the vector A, B. Explain the difference between the parallel and equivalent vectors. Write all opposite vectors in the form of a vector equation. So these are four questions for you. Let us first try to understand what are parallel and uh, opposite vectors. And then we'll also answer another question. The second question for you is, Anil is running around a circular track with circumference of 10 pi kilometers at a constant speed of 10 kilometers per hour. Represent displacement on a coordinate plane with center of a circle at the origin. Explain how the velocity vectors can be represented at the intercepts. Mark the point P when velocity is in the northeast direction. D is mark the position when the velocity is equivalent to that at P, if any. E is mark the position when the velocity is parallel to that at P, if any. Right. So these are the two test questions for you. You can always pause the video, answer these questions and then look into my suggestions. Let's actually begin with understanding what are parallel vectors, what are opposite vectors, and what are equivalent vectors. To explain, let me take uh, another example. This time I'll draw a trapezoid. Right. So here is an isosceles trapezoid. When I say isosceles trapezoid, then these two sides are equal. The opposite sides are indeed one pair. We have parallel sides. So let me label this as A, B, C, D. Now, in this trapezoid, when we say parallel vectors, parallel vectors basically mean two things. That is to say that they have same direction. So we have same direction. or even opposite direction. So in parallel vectors, we are only interested in checking if the direction is same or opposite, along the same line that means, right? So important thing here is magnitude can be different. That is what a parallel vector is. Now, some students sometimes think that magnitude has to be same or they do not consider the opposite direction. So that's a huge mistake. Now, let's talk about opposite vectors. Now, when we say opposite vectors, then we really mean that they have opposite direction. but same magnitude. Clear? Then they are opposite vectors. That means the sum of a vector and the opposite vector will always be a zero vector. 
So if I have a vector a and if I add it with the opposite vector, which could be written as minus of a, then that will give me always a zero vector, right? A zero vector. Is that clear to you? So that is how we define opposite vectors. Now, what are equivalent vectors? For equivalent vectors, it is important to understand that they have same direction and same magnitude, right? So in this case, what we have is same direction and equal magnitude. right so but the position can be different right so important thing here is when we talk about vectors they are kind of free vectors right imagine free vectors so the position can be different is that clear so whenever we talk about vectors they are actually free vectors they could have any position Two important things are magnitude and direction and that is how we should be linking them. So for parallel vectors they have same or opposite direction, magnitude can be different for opposite vectors that means we have equal and opposite, think like that. Same magnitude but opposite direction and equivalent means same direction and same magnitude. We'll also consider about uh, writing them as an equation, right? So when we say, in this particular say, uh, say diagram, where we have taken trapezoid, what are the parallel vectors here? Well, we can write that the vector AB is actually parallel to vector DC, right? And it is actually also parallel to uh, CD, right? So it is vector CD and it's also parallel to BA, right? It's also uh, parallel to BA. So whether you see it in direction going from A to B or B to A, they'll be considered parallel vectors. Do you understand? If I join these two midpoints, for example, we get a vector which is parallel to AB and DC, right? So for example, if I have a midpoint here, E and F, in that case, the vector e to f will be a parallel vector. So in this case, e f will be parallel to the vector a b and to d c. So I hope you got the concept now. For parallel vectors, magnitudes can be different. The direction could be either the same or opposite. So either way you could write. Do you understand? That is how we represent parallel vectors. Now let's talk about opposite vectors. Now vector opposite to AB will be BA. That is kind of very important to understand, right? So, so we can say that the vectors which are opposite are AB and is opposite to B A. So these two are opposite vectors since they have same magnitude but opposite direction. Does it make sense to you? Right? Now let's look into equivalent vectors. Now in this particular diagram uh, we cannot really make any two equivalent vectors. But let us say we have this point E, right? In that case, we can say that the vector DE is equivalent to vector EA. Now DE and EA will be equivalent vectors since their magnitudes are same and same direction. Since E is a midpoint, right? Do you understand? So what we have done here is where E is midpoint of AD, right? In that case, DE is equivalent to EA. 
you get the idea. And equivalent vectors we could write like this. We could write DE is equal to EA. Now, if I write like this, it becomes a vector equation. As we move forward, we'll be working more and more on this vector equation, right? You could also write that uh, DE is equal to minus of AE, minus negative direction, right? So you could write like this also. So that makes sense. Perfect. So I hope with this, you get basic concept of what are parallel vectors, what are opposite vectors, how are they different, what are equivalent vectors, and how are they different to parallel vectors, right? Now, based on this, you should be in a position to answer the two test questions. So let's take those test questions again. So the first question for us is to draw a parallelogram ABCD, which we have done with P as the midpoint on AB. So AP is equal to PB. List all vectors parallel to AB. Right? So that's what we need to list. So all vectors parallel to AB means AB is parallel to, uh, we can write AP, which is also parallel to PB. But the opposite vectors are also parallel, right? So we could also write BP vector and we could also write PA. But DC is also parallel, right? So, so vector AB is also parallel to vector DC and also parallel to CD. So the other way also, that is kind of very important to understand. Similarly, I could have written AD parallel to BC. Now in this question, we are only looking for listing all vectors parallel to AB. So AB is parallel to DC, also CD. DC and CD are opposite vectors, right? Okay. Now, part B is list all vectors equivalent to AB. Now, the vector which is equivalent to AB is only DC. So, so we write it like this. AB is equal to only DC in this given situation. Now C is explain the difference between parallel and equivalent vectors. So in parallel vectors, the direction could be same or opposite. Magnitude may not be seen. For equivalent vectors, magnitude and direction both are same. Right? So, so the difference is that for equivalent vectors, both direction and magnitude are same. So that basically means position can be different. Clear? Okay. But in parallel vectors, magnitude can be different and direction is either same or opposite. So I hope this point is very clear and that's very important to understand. It could be reverse direction also, even then the vector is parallel, okay? Part D is write all opposite vectors to the form of a vector in the form of a vector equation, right? So we need to now write opposite vectors in the form of vector equation. What I'm trying to say here is that we could write AB as equal to minus of BA. So that is in the form of an equation. So if their magnitude is same, then we could do this, right? We could also write AP as equal to PB. Now since their magnitude is same and the direction is also same, we do not have to write minus PB. But 
we could write this as minus BP, right? That could be written, right? When we say write all opposite vectors in the form of vector equation, in the given parallelogram, we'll include AD and BC also, right? So, so the opposite vector to AD, A to D, will be B to C opposite, that means C to B. So we could write this as minus C to B. Is that clear to you? Or we could write CB as equals to minus of AB. So that is how we could actually write the opposite vectors. We could also write here AB, uh, so let me extend it on this side. I could write vector AB is equal to minus of vector CD. A, B, and C, D are opposite vectors, but with this negative sign, they become equivalent vectors. Is that clear to you? So that is how parallel, opposite, and equivalent vectors are related. So I hope the concept is absolutely clear. Now we saw this in a 2D diagram, right? We could take a parallel pipette and also do the same thing. But in the next example, we'll take along a circular path. Question number two on this concept is Anil is running around a circular track with circumference of 10 pi kilometer at a constant speed of 10 kilometers per hour. Represent displacement on the coordinate plane with center of the circle at the origin. So we could do something like this. Uh, let me draw a circle to represent the circular path, right? Okay, and uh, we will keep the center at the origin. Okay, so that becomes a coordinate plane. Now, we are, we are given that the circumference is 10 pi. So, circumference is equal to 10 pi. But the formula is 2 pi r, right? So r is equal to 10 by 2, which is 5. So in this particular case, this point should be at 5. This will be at minus 5. So these points will be 5 units away from the origin. So we have a circle with radius of 5 units. So we've done the first part, that is to represent displacement on the coordinate plane with center at origin, right? So basically, uh, this is kind of time, right? Of course, time cannot be negative. So we're just replacing, showing it as a displacement from the center, right? Okay. Explain how the velocity vectors can be represented at the intercepts. Now, these are the four intercepts. How will you represent velocity vectors? Well, velocity vectors are tangents. to the displacement curve. So you can, you know, velocity is rate of change of displacement. This is from the definition, right? So velocity is rate of change of displacement. So, so basically a tangent represents that, perfect. So in our case, velocity at this phi will be kind of like this, you understand? Velocity at this point, since we are going in, let us say, counterclockwise, which is normally considered positive, the velocity will be tangent. So these will be the velocity components at the given points, which are the intercepts, you understand now? So those become the velocity. So explain how the velocity vectors can be represented at the intercept. So at each intercept, I've drawn the velocity components. Now we know there's a constant speed of 10 kilometers per hour, right? So let's label these points as A, B, C, D, right? Be easy to communicate. So, so velocity at A is actually equal to magnitude is 10. Do you see that? Since the speed is 10 kilometers per hour, but at A, it is north. That is the direction. Velocity at B 
will be again 10 as the magnitude but it is going to be towards the direction west you understand so velocity at c will be south right so 10 south and at d it is going to be uh, towards east right so it'd be 10 east so that is how you're going to represent velocity at the intercepts perfect now part c is mark the position p when the velocity is in northeast direction so northeast means we'll consider this to be north right this is east well this is west and this is south so northeast will be this direction correct so how do we get northeast direction on this circle so basically what we are doing here is this will be like coming in this direction but here a point this is your northeast direction do you understand because the tangent is pointing in the northeast direction and so we have our solution here that we'll call this point as p so at point p which is marked right there in the quadrant four we have the velocity in northeast direction so velocity at p is 10 in northeast direction so you'll note that the magnitude is same as speed right which is 10 kilometers per hour so we're writing 10 for it is that clear to you okay so that's the solution for part c now d is mark the position when velocity is equivalent to that at p if any so there is no other position since the direction is constantly changing so so the answer for d is no position none since direction is always changing right in a circular path it is to be noted that in a circular path direction is always changing so the velocity cannot be seen now part e is mark the position when velocity is parallel to p so parallel to p could be this point also so that is q for us so parallel could be in opposite direction right so so that position is q as shown here so we can say that this is south west so we could have southwest velocity at q will be 10 southwest and that is parallel to velocity at p is that clear to you correct so that is how we need to understand the vectors important thing again is to understand that parallel vectors could be in the opposite direction with unequal magnitudes equivalent vectors will always have same magnitude and same direction opposite vectors will have same magnitude but opposite direction and that is how these vectors are related also equivalent vectors we can write in the form of an equation we could always equate the opposite vectors with a negative sign of an equivalent vector right so that summarizes our thoughts about parallel opposite and equivalent vectors i hope the concept is absolutely clear feel free to write your comment share your views and if you like and subscribe to my videos that'd be great thanks for watching and all the best